He was a very learned person, a great scholar. However, Gopinath Acharya pointed out to him that you, you try to understand the absolute truth by, by your hypothesis, by speculation. You simply try to understand the absolute truth by the power of your own mind and senses. You can never understand the absolute truth in this way. And you have neglected two of the most important scriptures. You have not given importance to the Srimad Bhagavatam or the Mahabharata. So, in this way, Gopinath Acharya was chastising Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was saying, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Chaitanya, he, he is a great personality, he is certainly not an ordinary man, but he cannot be God, because God does not come in the Kali Yuga. The, the Shastras tell us the Lord is known as Tree Yuga, but he, he does not come in the Kali Yuga. So how could Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ever be the Supreme Lord? You are claiming like this. But Gopinath Acharya tells his brother-in-law, you foolish person, you have read so much, you've studied so much, you've done so much speculation, your heart has become dry. He said, I'm not going to put any more seeds into your heart because it's useless. Your heart is so dry that the seeds don't sprout. But you should understand that the Lord does come in every age. Indeed, the scriptures say, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge, that in every yuga the Lord comes. However, Tree Yuga means no Lila avatar. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not just simply Lila avatar. He is the Supreme Lord Himself. Lila avatars, they come in the other ages. And there are unlimited numbers of Lila avatars. But the Lord also comes in the Kali Yuga. And this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Chaitanya, as his sannyasi means, he is actually the Lord. But he is coming in a special role as a covered incarnation. He is not revealing himself to everyone because he knows that in this age there will be many impostors. Many persons will, claim, will try to claim their, that they are actually the incarnations of the Lord. Therefore, although Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Lord Himself, He comes in a covered role, simply as a devotee. Gopinath Acharya went on to tell Sarvabhoma, his brother-in-law, that you can only understand the Lord by the mercy of the Lord. Without the mercy of the Lord, then you cannot know. But Gopinath Acharya then quoted this verse, from Mahabharata, from the Vishnu Sahasrana, and then he quoted also the famous verse from Srimad Bhagavatam in the 11th canto, Krishna Varnam Tvisha Krishnam Sango Pangastra Parshutam Yagnai Sankirtan Krai Yajanti Sumedasa. Right? Sumedasa, people who are 
intelligent, who have purified their brains, they can understand how the Lord comes in the Kali Yoga and they will take part in his congregational chanting. Jai Radha So, Gopinath Acharya quoted these verses to Sava Bhumabhata Acharya to point out to him that one who is actually the Lord, he, he is, his position has to be supported by scriptures. And we should understand these scriptures with the help of the Acharyas. So the learned persons, just like in Bhagavad Gita, we see Arjuna establish Lord Krishna's position. He said, not only do I accept you as the Supreme Lord, but also Asita, Devala, Vyasa, Narada, they have all understood this. Now I am all, I also understand. So in the same way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's position is recognized by the learned authorities of devotional service. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya needed to be convinced about this. So Gopinath Acharya told him that when you are blessed with the mercy of the Lord, then you will actually understand and this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's position. But then the third occasion when this verse is used comes in relation to Lord Chaitanya's pastime still in Jagannath Puri. Lord Chaitanya was told that Brahmananda Bharati had come to see him. Brahmananda Bharati was a sannyasi in the line of Shankaracharya also and he was senior, somewhat senior to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he heard Makunda tell him that Brahmananda Bharati has come and he wants to meet you, then Lord Chaitanya said, Brahmananda Bharati, he is like my spiritual master. I will come to meet him. He should not come to me. I will go to meet him. However, when Lord Chaitanya came to meet Brahmananda Bharati, he was surprised because he saw that Brahmananda Bharati was dressed in a deer skin. Now in the Manu Samhita, it describes that a person in the renounced order of life should dress either in a deer skin or in tree bark. And just similarly when Sita Ram Lakshman went into the forest, you know, they dressed themselves in tree bark. And so uh, this Brahmananda Bharati was there in his deer skin. However, when Lord Chaitanya saw him, he said, Where is Brahmananda Bharati? And Makunda said, Here he is, my Lord, this is Brahmananda Bharati. And Lord Chaitanya said, This, this cannot be Brahmananda Bharati. This is not Brahmananda Bharati. This cannot be him. So, Brahmananda Bharati was put into this situation. Then he began to reflect on the situation and he understood that Lord Chaitanya does not approve of my wearing a deerskin. So he then said, from today on I will no longer wear a deerskin. And when Lord Chaitanya understood that Brahmananda Bharati had made this resolve, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally sent him a set of sannyasi robes to wear. So Brahmananda Bharati then went on to glorify the position of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was trying to explain that Lord Chaitanya and Lord Jagannath are one and the same. 
he said, Babe, you are both Brahman and you're both delivering the entire world. But Lord Jagannath, he is fixed in one place and you are moving. And you are fair skinned, golden color, and Lord Jagannath is a darkish color. But you're the same. In this way, uh, Brahmananda Bharati was glorifying Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He, he then quoted this verse from the Mahabharata, from the Vishnu Sahasrana. And he describes, this is describing your personality. Every description in this verse fits you. Your body is, your arms are covered with sandalwood. You're wearing the threads, ornaments from Lord Jagannath. And you are very fixed in the renounced order of life. You are delivering, you are putting fear into the hearts of the non-devotees. And uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu hearing this verse, she said, We are both Brahman. There is one Supreme Brahman and we are all his servants. As the Vedas say, Nityo Nityana Chaitananas Chaitanana. Amongst all eternals, there is one Supreme Eternal. And amongst all conscious beings, there is one supreme conscious being. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying we are both jivas, but Brahmananda Bharati was understanding Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a different way. He was, and he told Lord Chaitanya, he said, from the beginning of my life, I have been meditating on the impersonal Brahman. But now that I have seen you, I'm attracted to Krishna. And I, I cannot give up thinking of Krishna, thinking of you. And I think you are not different from Lord Krishna himself. Brahmananda Bharati, oh, Lord Chaitanya told Brahmananda Bharati that no, we, we are all servants. Brahmananda Bharati was saying, you're the supreme controller, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, we are all, I'm subordinate to the Lord. Just like you are subordinate, I am also subordinate. We, he is the supreme controller, we are his servants. And Brahmananda Bharati said, but I know that you have a special nature as the Lord. Sometimes the Lord himself likes to be defeated by his devotees. And he gave the example, just like Lord Krishna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he had promised he would not fight. But in the middle of the battle, when Arjuna's life was in danger, then at that time, Lord Krishna came running towards Bhishma and picked up the chariot wheel ready to slay Bhishma. So in this way, Lord Krishna broke his promise to satisfy his devotee. So Brahmananda Bharati explained that, you see, it's not that I defeated you, but it's your nature that you like to be defeated by your devotees. Sarvabhama Bharacharya was trying to mediate between Brahmananda Bharati and Lord Chaitanya. They were having a joking discussion, you see. Lord Chaitanya said, Yes, I am defeated by you. You're the spiritual master, I am your disciple. The guru should always defeat the disciple. Disciples should never think they can defeat the 
the spiritual master. Therefore, Brahmananda Bharati is defeating me in this discussion. But Brahmananda Bharati said, no, actually it's the nature of the Lord that sometimes he likes to be defeated by his devotee. So in this way, uh, Brahmananda Bharati was glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's position as the Supreme Lord. Mahaprabhu had all the features of the Supreme Lord. From the time of his birth, uh, Nilamba Chakravarti, the grandfather and the maternal from the mother's side, from Sachimata's side. The Lambar Chakravarti was the father of Sachimata. So he was a, a learned astrologer. So when Sachimata was pregnant, she was carrying the child for more than the expected time. She had been pregnant for so many months. Usually a mother will deliver the child after nine months. But nine months passed and still the child had not been delivered. So then Nilambar Chakravarti, he looked at the positions of the different planets and he understood that the child is waiting for an auspicious time. That when he will actually appear, that it will be a very auspicious time, indicating his godly qualities. So of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared on the days tomorrow, or Purnima, on the Purnima day, and the particular time when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, at that time there was the eclipse. So it meant everyone was engaged in chanting the holy name. And in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was indicating something of his future activities, that he had come to spread the chanting of the Holy Name. Kali Yuga Dham Harinam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vininahi Tara Prabhata In the Kali Yuga, the process, the Yuga Dharma, is to chant the Holy Name. Without being empowered with the energy of Krishna, then no one can successfully propagate the holy name. So who is a better, there's no better person than the Lord himself. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally comes to inaugurate the chanting of the holy name. And he does this not just simply on his own, one of the qualities of the Lord is that He is never alone, but He is always in the company of His devotees. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, along with His associates, propagating the chanting of the Holy Name. We have our Panchatattva, the Lord in His different features, and they inaugurate His Yuga Dharma. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants everyone to experience the mercy of Krishna. There is no more merciful personality than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he showed this mercy by distributing the holy name. Therefore, those who take part in the Yoga Dharma, they are described Sumedasa, broad intelligence, pure intelligence. Srila Prabhupada contrasts how in Bhagavad Gita Krishna says uh, Antabhat Tupalam Tesham Tadbhavati Alpamedasham that some people, those people worship other gods to get things which are limited and temporary. So such persons are described as Alpamedasaha Alpamedasaha, I mean very meager intelligence. Or Srila Prabhupada said in one class, their brain is like stool. They cannot understand. 
what is the real important thing. So giving the holy name, uh, just like Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya, in the beginning he was also impersonalized. He was accustomed to speculation, trying to understand the Lord. And all of his students were also doing the same thing. And he was thinking even that he would teach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But it was Mahaprabhu who was able to teach him, to reveal to him the glories of devotional service. And similarly, Brahmananda Bharati, another impersonalist whose heart was dry, who was simply taking pleasure in austerities and wearing the deer skin and feeling some prestige that I'm a renounced person. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu humbled him and taught him the real position of renouncing. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's position is glorified by Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He said, Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga Shikshata Eka Purusha Purana Shri Krishna Chaitanya Sharira Dari Kinkri Pangurir Yastvam Aham Prabhati That Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya had uh, composed a hundred verses glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is one of the verses, and this one is one verse which is particularly appreciated by the devotees, because he describes how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach us the process of devotional service based on two things, Vairagya and Vidya, detachment, from everything which is not in relation to Krishna consciousness and Vidya, transcendental knowledge of the Absolute. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to give us these things, detachment. Where there is actual bhakti, then there must also be jnana and vairagya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught this by his personal example. That wherever he went, it's as described here, that in his early life he would be a householder, later he would accept the householder life and he would teach everyone. He would be equipoised, nishta, very famous. And he would challenge those who are opposed to the anything which is against surrender to the Supreme Lord. So this is the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He appears in the world and any incarnation of the Lord, they have to be supported by scriptural reference. Recently there's Kumbha Mela, right? You go to Kumbha Mela any time, any time when there's Kumbha Mela, you see there's so many incarnations of God. They claim to be incarnations of God. They say, come and meet that new avatar, this avatar, that avatar. Right? Though, what is actually proof that they are avatar? It, it has to, their position must be supported by Shastra, not just by votes, not just by popularity that someone can claim to be an incarnation of God. But it has to be supported with evidence from the scriptures. So this particular verse from Mahabharata, along with the other verse from the 11th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, spoken by Karabhajana to Niviraj, he describes the Lord's incarnations in each age. Remember, we were saying Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was thinking the Lord didn't come in Kali Yuga. But in the 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord's incarnations are also are all described. Similarly, in the 10th canto, Gargamuni also described something or gave a hint of the 
appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gargamuni was a priest who was sent to the home of Nanda Maharaj to perform the name-giving ceremony for Lord Krishna. So at that time, Garga Acharya explained that this child appears with a lot different color bodily luster in each age. Previously, he had a red and a whitish luster. Now he had come with a blackish color. And he also has a yellowish color. So, the, in the Satya Yuga, the Lord comes in the whitish color. He teaches meditation. In the Trita Yuga, he comes in the reddish color to teach uh, Yagya, sacrifice, he came as Lord Krishna, the blackish color, the process was temple worship, worshipping the deity, and in the Kali Yuga, he comes in the golden, yellowish color. And at that time, of course, the process is the chanting of the holy name. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took up he inaugurated this Yuga Dharma. Before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was also the chanting of the Holy Name. But it was restricted. Generally, it was only for Brahmanas to chant the name of the Lord. Only Brahmanas were al allowed to recite Vedic mantras. Right? The chanting of the Holy Name is a Vedic mantra. Kali Santara Upanishad. So, who can chant the Vedic mantras? One should be Brahman. You have to be qualified by birth. So, it is sometimes said that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began teaching the chanting of Hare Krishna, there was some objection that this is Vedic mantra. You can't give this chanting to everyone. All of these people, they're not Brahmins. It's, it's only for our, us people, the Brahmins. We should teach this. We give the chanting, not all these other people. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the chanting to everyone. It was open for everyone to join in the kirtan. But the Brahmins were complaining that this is Vedic mantra. But in the Vedas it says, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, some people say Chaitanya Mahaprabhu changed the order. And they put Krishna's first and then Rama. It says, now everyone can chant. See, this is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. To give the chanting of the holy name. We can chant any name of the Lord, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave great importance to chanting this Hare Krishna mantra. We see in Chaitanya Charitamrita, there was a pastime also with one other devotee, great Acharya, um, Balaba Acharya. He challenged, he said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, well, he said to the devotees that, a chaste wife should never utter the name of her husband. Mother Sita never uttered the name of Lord Ram. So a chaste wife should never utter the name of her husband. We are all Prakriti. We are all the energy of the Lord. We are like the, the wife compared to the Lord. He is our husband and we are like his wife. But we are chanting his name all the time. So, is this proper? So, the, when the question was put to the assembly of the devotees, the devotees said, just wait, just now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will come. He will answer your inquiry. So, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, then the question was put to him. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu replied, Yes, he said, It is the duty of a chaste wife 
to follow the instruction of her husband. Whatever the husband orders, the wife should do. The same way, the Lord has ordered everyone to chant his holy name. Therefore, everyone can join in this chanting. There is no wrong in the chanting of the holy name. So this is the glory of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he distributed this holy name for everyone. We are very, very fortunate that we can take advantage of this process. Maybe we can take a question. Mr. Bhagavan Prabhu. beginning you're reading about the happiness and peacefulness of renunciation and detachment that was being described if I may ask it I'm, I came from America and in our country there's thousands of Indians that come to the temples but none of them ever want to become a renunciate like here in in India there's hundreds of Indian brahmacharis. There's so many Bra Indians that join the brahmachari ashrams throughout the temples in India. But in America, they, none of the Indians ever want to be, whoever makes it there, they, they never want to join that order of life. So you look at this and it looks like that people may just want to be renunciates under circumstances where they can't make any money having a job. But if there's the opportunities there for money and wife and possessions, then that's really what man w would want. So I was curious about the happiness, the renunciation that was being described there. Like, is is uh, the brown sort of life is just sort of like you know for losers, or is it, there's a way to get is actually the perfection of life or the happy, the highest uh, stage of happiness? Well, it doesn't matter what ashram one is in. Grihi tako vani tako shadahari bolidako, right? It doesn't matter if you are in the renounced order of life or if you are in household of life. The important thing is that you are in Krishna consciousness, that you are engaged in Krishna's service. Then we want that association, we want that person. That is the renounced order of life is not required. What is required is devotion. Krishna is understood by devotion, not just by dry renunciation. Right? We, Lord Chaitanya didn't appreciate Brahmananda Bharati wearing the deer skin. So renunciation is not what's required. What is required is devotion for the Lord. So in any ashram, one can cultivate that devotion. The important thing is to hear in the association of devotees, to regularly associate. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't encourage people to just abruptly change their situation. But he said, he quoted Srimad Bhagavatam, Stani stita shruti katantan vanmano bir ye prayaso jita jito piya sitai strilokyam. Remain in whatever position you are in and simply hear about Krishna in the association of devotees. In this way, you can conquer Krishna. Although Krishna is Ajita, although he is unconquerable, he becomes conquered by a devotee who simply absorbs himself in hearing his glories. So this is the purpose of our Krishna consciousness movement. All over the world, wherever you are, whatever color of skin, whatever race you may be, Indian or non-Indian, 
you, we should try to hear about Krishna and cultivate Krishna consciousness. You may have a job, you may work in the material world, you have duties, you have responsibilities, nothing wrong with that. Remain in your situation and just try to spend some time regularly cultivating our Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada wrote so many wonderful books for us to take advantage of. Lord Chaitanya gave the chanting of the holy name. So these two things with Prabhupada's books, the chanting of the holy name, then what more do you need? You have everything. Hmm. Okay, you have to, you, you're in America, it's a materialistic country. This, this is the material world. If we're not in Krishna consciousness, it's a material world. But when Prabhupada was in New York, Prabhupada would say, I'm not in New York, I'm always in Vrindavan, because I'm always thinking of Krishna. So, being in America, it's not a, an obstacle if you are Krishna conscious. Narayana parasarve nakutas chanya vibhyate swarga apavarga narakesh vapitu yata darshana. A devotee does not see distinction between heaven and hell and liberation. Wherever he goes, he simply sees service to Krishna. It does not make any difference. We have to be convinced of this by our practice, by taking shelter of the Lord. Then we can experience this. So we have to stop now. It's already nine o'clock. You have a big program today. Thank you very much. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki. Srila Prabhupada Ki. जय श्री श्री नरसिंह देव की भक्तराज प्रहलाद महाराज की ओम नरसिंहाय नम ओम महासिंहाय नम ओम दिव्य सिंहाय नम ओम महाबलाय नम ओम उग्र सिंहाय नम ओम महादेवाय नम ओम स्तंभजाय नम ओम उग्रलोचनाय नम ओम रौद्राय नम ओम सर्वद्भुताय नम ओम श्रीमनाय नम ओम योगानंदाय नम ओम त्रिविक्रमाय नम ओम हरए नम ओम कोलाहलाय नम ओम चक्रिणे नम ओम विजयाय नम ओम जयवर्धनाय नम ओम पंचननाय नम ओम परब्रह्मणे नम ओम अघोराय नम ओम घोरविक्रमा